This is Twit. This is a really weird story, but I kind of like it. Reportedly made a secret iPod for the U.S. government <laughs> yes. that had a built-in Geiger counter. And this maybe <laughs> this this comes from a former Apple uh, software engineer, David Shayer. It actually comes from Tidbits, so I should really yeah uh, show the Tidbits. The case of the top secret iPod. It was a gray day in late 2005. It makes you want to know like if anything you see out on the street is real. Like maybe they're walking around with fake umbrellas and fake briefcases and fake iPods and what, what's even real? Without knocking, the director of iPod software, my boss's boss, abruptly entered and closed the door behind him. He cut to the chase. I have a special assignment for you. Your boss doesn't know about it. You'll help two engineers from the U.S. Department of Energy build a special iPod, Rick. Report only to me. The next, I don't think he talked like that, but I, the next day the receptionist called to tell me the two men were waiting in the lobby. I went downstairs to meet Paul and Matthew. They were engineers who would actually build this custom iPod. They were from the DOE. Uh, they didn't actually work for the DOE. They worked for Bechtel, but Bechtel was a big defense contractor of the DOE. And they wanted to put, they wanted the iPod to look completely normal, but have a Geiger counter in it. No, they, they're speculating that it was a Geiger, Geiger counter. They're just that they, oh, the they didn't say who, what the it person, is. No, the, the person, the person who wrote it as, was was obviously not shown exactly what they were doing. They were just here to <laughs> offer uh, developer support to these two people who had to basically get learn how to build an entire binary of the entire iPod software so they can add software. The only things that the only things that he was aware of is that number one, they were putting extra hardware into it. Number two, that the nature of what they wanted to modify this uh, this iPod to do is to secretly be able to collect readings slash data and save that data onto the hard drive in a way that uh, does not make the iPod look like anything other than a normal iPod. He, oh. he talks he, and he talks about so it how wouldn't be a they, bug. It wouldn't be like listening device. It would be something that you the person carrying it would know that it could do something because he has to return it to get the readings off of it. So that yeah, would make sense. The, Maybe a nuclear inspector looking maybe somebody visiting north korea just checking around seeing what he sees yeah that no, he, he's he was speculating that it was a, a a geiger counter type of device because it was they were working on a contract for the department of energy that is one of the things that they do um some of the talk back on that article was from people who were kind of in that industry who's saying that they're probably less they're probably simpler ways to achieve the same result, but they, don't, they aren't mentioning what authority they're doing it on. All we, all we know is that it was definitely secret. They were, uh, the, they were talking about how uh, they're ask, they, would, they would do things like ask them, like, how can I store data on this device in such a way that it wouldn't interfere with the device and no one would be able to see the data? And he said, well, why don't you create a new partition? And that way, even iTunes wouldn't see this extra partition. It would just be reading as a regular iPod. Oh, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, and the uh, they they weren't uh, it was a contract that lasted a couple of months and then they left and they didn't come back again uh again it's the 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 trigger for this apparently was there the other thing that they're asking about is that we need to be able to activate to turn on the data collection and recording and they found if they helped them find like some sort of like whatever the deepest sub menu if you of a listen settings menu to was. rick astley Never going to give you up. It will <laughs> type in, start recording. Type in nine nines, take the integral, and then do a square root. <laughs> I think it's a, it's cause it's just a great story. But if you think about it, yeah, if you're going into some facility and you you know you can't carry a Geiger counter or or some yeah. other measuring device, but you could carry a reasonably carry an iPod, and they might look at it, spin the wheel a little bit, see what your musical taste is. But if it looks like a normal iPod, certainly Apple wouldn't build a Geiger counter yeah. into their iPod. Uh, you got free U2 album too, huh? <laughs> I, I don't want that either. <laughs> How you stop yeah. that? There's there's lots of interesting <laughs> things. Like he was he's also mentioning that this was the model of iPod that they were using was one where it was very easy to take it apart and put it together again without leaving any tooling marks. It was also the last model of iPod, iPod where the soft the the operating system software was not signed by Apple. So apparent oh. so evidently that would be a very it would be a very very easy thing for them to do as opposed to the next generation of Apple. Uh, the whole thing is very interesting because it's like I always say the best stories always come when, from people who not only are no longer working 
working for the company, but now they're like 10 years out. And now they're thinking they're that, well, no, no, no secret that I have now is going to be of any good, of, of any use to anybody. So it's probably okay for me to start talking. <laughs>